software, developers, we're an opinionated bunch. Yes! Especially when it comes to our favourite tech stacks. Fortunately, Stack Overflow provides us with an annual survey, which we can use to provide data on why our chosen tech stack is the best. My opinion's the only one that counts. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with this video. I'm going to create a crowd app using the most loved technologies according to the 2023 Stack Overflow developer survey. First, we need to find out which language we're going to use for our CRUD app. Let's open up the 2023 developer survey and check out the programming, scripting, and markup languages section. This list contains some languages that are a little concerning, such as MATLAB, COBOL, and Visual Basic, which I really don't want to be building a CRUD app with. Luckily, these are at the lower end of the spectrum, and fortunately, I'm not doing a video on the most despised tech stack. Not until I hit at least 75,000 subs. So uh, please don't press that subscribe button. Fortunately, on the other end of the list, we have Rust as the most loved language, just beating out Elixir for first place. Perfect, we'll go with that. Next, we need a web framework. While Stack Overflow does provide a list of the most loved web frameworks, it doesn't provide an option for any Rust-based one. It does provide one for Elixir through Phoenix. But as we're not using Elixir, well, it's no good. Fortunately, however, I have done a video on my own favourite Rust web framework, but we're not going to use it in this video. Instead, we're going to use Axum, which a lot of you had a high amount of praise for in the comments. So it feels like a good choice for our most loved tech stack. Lastly, every good CRUD app needs a database. Luckily for me, Postgres is the winner here on the Stack Overflow developer survey, although I wouldn't have minded using Redis, which came in at a close second. With our application stack decided, let's take a quick peek at what we're going to build. For this video, we're going to create a simple CRUD app to manage book quotes using an HTTP JSON API interface. Our application will allow for CRUD operations using the following API endpoints, and our data model will consist of the book title and the quote itself. Simple stuff. We're also going to deploy this application to the cloud for free, but more on that in a minute. First, we need to create a new project using Cargo. You can do so by using the cargo new command in your terminal. For this project, we're using Rust 1.72, so make sure to install it using RustUp as per your operating system. With our project set up, we now need to add in the dependencies via the cargo.toml. The dependencies we want are Axum, which is our web server, Serde and Serde JSON for encoding and decoding, Tokyo, which is our application's asynchronous runtime, SQL X, which allows us to connect to our Postgres database, and the UUID and Chrono data types, which will allow us to store unique identifiers and timestamps in our data model. When adding these to your own cargo.toml, make sure to set the same feature flags as I have. With our initial dependencies added, let's whip up a basic service. To begin, open up the main.rs file in your text editor, then go ahead and delete everything inside of it. Next, add in the following lines of code. Here we're creating an asynchronous main function to initialize our application, which will create and start an Axum server on port 3000. Next, we want to create a health check endpoint which will return the status code of 200. We can create this using the following function and binding it to our slash path in the application router. Now we can go ahead and test this code. Let's open up a new terminal window and use the cargo run command to both build and run our application. Once the application is running, we can open up another terminal window and send a curl request to localhost 3000. We receive back the HTTP status code of 200, or OK, which tells us everything is working correctly. So far, so good. So what's next? Well, personally, I like to deploy my applications as soon as possible. The reason for this is that it's always easier to do so when the application is less complex. This also means it's much easier to discover any problems as you iterate, rather than having to sift through a larger amount of code later on. We have a few options to deploy this. Typically, I'd use my new home lab, but that's not ideal for everyone following at home, at least until I start doing some more home lab based content. Still, I wanted a free option, which typically cloud providers such as AWS don't really provide. So I'm going to use the sponsor of today's video, Flow, to deploy our application. Flow's base offering provides us with a free application and a database, which is harder and harder to find in this economy. That database also happens to be Postgres, so it'll work with our chosen tech stack. In order to deploy to Flow, we're going to first need to containerize our application. Fortunately, Docker also happens to sit pretty high on the most loved technologies list. I love it when a plan comes together. 
let's go ahead and create a Docker file for use. The flow documentation has an example on how to do this for Rust applications. Let's go ahead and copy this. Pasting it in, we then need to make a few modifications in order to work for our own application. The first is to change the version of Rust to 1.72. The second is to build our app in release mode, which gives us much better performance. And lastly, we just need to change the reference of template-rust to our application's name, quotes. With our Docker file complete, we can test that it's working using the docker build command. And if everything works, you should see a similar output as on screen. Now we can actually test that the application runs by using the docker run command and exposing our port of 3000. Once it's running, we can run the other curl command as we did before. So far, so good. However, we need to make one more change for our app to work with Flow. The documentation recommends dynamically setting your web server port based on an environment variable passed into the application. To make that change, let's head on back over to our main.rs file and add in the following line to pull out the port from an environment variable or fall back to port 3000 if the nvar doesn't exist. With the code changes and docker file complete, we now need to get our code into a remote repository. Flow integrates with GitHub, so let's go ahead and create a new repository for our code. Then we can go ahead and commit our code, add the repository as the origin and push it on up. Now we're ready to deploy our application. To do so, first sign in to Flow and then create a new workspace followed by adding a new project. We'll give ours the name of Most Loved Crud App. Next, we need to link our GitHub account so Flow can access our code. Then we can create a new application with our repo. In the application settings, check to make sure you're using the correct branch and select the region you want to deploy on. You can also see the port environment variable here as well, which you can change to whatever you like. After clicking deploy, we get some lovely confetti and we can check the build and deploy logs for our application's code. By the way, Flow are launching on Product Hunt, so be sure to check them out there. You can check the link in the description down below. After a short while, everything should be deployed correctly, and we can go ahead and test our application using the provided URL. With that, we have our app deployed, with no cost. Very cool. With everything deployed, now is a good time to refactor our code. Let's first create a new handlers.rs file which we'll use to store all of our handler logic. We can start by moving the health handler into here as a first step. Then we can head on back over to our main function, import the handler module and use it with our slash endpoint. Now we're ready to proceed. The next thing we want to do is start creating our CRUD endpoints. The best place to start a book is always at the beginning. Let's do the same here and start with the letter C aka create. As we're building a RESTful API, the create endpoint will be a post method to the slash quotes path. This endpoint will accept a request body with the JSON schema as on screen, which is an object that expects a string for both the book and quote fields. To represent this, we can create a new struct in Rust and use the Surday macros to easily support the deserialization of our input model. With this model defined, we can now add our handler function. I gotta say, the recommendation to use Axum was pretty spot on. It's a really nice framework to use, especially for removing boilerplates such as request body decoding that you typically have to do with other frameworks. So far, I'm impressed. With our route defined, we can now start thinking about our database integration. To achieve this, we're going to use the SQLX package for Rust, which works with both Postgres and Tokyo, which is the asynchronous runtime for Axum. It also happens to be my favorite SQL driver for Rust, and I have a pretty decent video on how to use it. To begin, let's head back over to our main function. The first thing we wanna do is pull out the database URL from the associated environment variable. We'll also throw an exception if this doesn't exist. Next, we can then create our PG pool options, passing in the database URL. We can then provide the database pool to our handlers using the with state function. This way, our HTTP handler functions are able to have access to the database through the state parameter if they need it. Let's go ahead and modify our create handler to accept it by adding in the following line. Pretty simple. Now that we have our database connectivity set up, we need to add an instance of Postgres to our application's deployment. To set this up with Flow is incredibly easy. If we head back on over to the web page for our projects, we get an option to add a database to it. Go ahead and set this up as I have done on screen. Once you're complete, we should be given a database URL that we're able to connect with. Go ahead and copy this to your clipboard, then heading over to a terminal, add it to an environment variable. Now we're ready to set up our database. In order to get our initial tables up and running, the best way to do this is using database migrations. 
Fortunately, the SQLX CLI can help us with this. Let's first install it using the following cargo command on our terminal. Once the CLI is installed, we can now use it to generate our initial migrations using the command on screen. This command will create a new directory called migrations with an initial file inside of it. Open up this file and add in the following lines of SQL to create our quote table. This table will have an ID field which will be stored as a UUID and a column for both the book and the quote itself, which are of type varchar and text respectively. Then we'll add a timestamp for both the inserted at and updated at times. We also don't want to double up on quotes, so we'll go ahead and make both the quote and book pair a unique constraint. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and run these migrations. We can do this with the SQLX CLI as well. Make sure you're in the terminal where you set up your database URL environment variable, and then run the following command. If everything is successful, we can now move on to writing our database query. Back over in our Rust code, let's first create another struct to represent the database model. This is going to be similar to the model of our request body, but will also contain the quote ID as a UUID and our two timestamps. We'll also add in a constructor which will take both the book and quote as an input and generate a UUID and the necessary timestamps for us. Scrolling down to the create function, first change the return type to what I have on screen. This will return both a status code and JSON in the event of a success, and in the event of failure, just an HTTP status code. Then let's use our constructor method to create a new quote and add some SQL to insert it into our table. Then we want to bind our input parameters to the SQL statement, followed by executing the command on our database pool. Next, we'll check the result of this query. And if everything was successful, return the HTTP status code of created with our quote encoded as a JSON response. Otherwise, we'll return an internal server error. Next, we just need to add an endpoint for the create handler to our application router. To do this, first import the post method from the Axum routing module, and then add the following line to the app router in order to use the handler with the slash quotes path. With the create handler integrated, we're now able to commit our code and push it up to our GitHub repo. Flow will automatically monitor the main branch of our code, and whenever it detects a change, automatically build and deploy our code for us. Pretty neat. After a short while, the deployment should complete. However, in our case, we've actually encountered an error. Fortunately, Flow uses AI to actually detect what went wrong and suggest what we need to do to fix it. In our case, we forgot to add the database URL as an environment variable. So let's jump on over to our application settings to fix this up. Here, Flow also provides a button to import our database credentials as environment variables, which makes it really easy to fix our problem. All we have to do now is just save our settings. Both of these are fantastic quality of life features. Now that our environment variables are set up, let's go ahead and redeploy this manually by pressing the following buttons. After another short wait, we should see everything deploy, which means we can go ahead and test our new endpoint. Heading back to our terminal, let's create a new quote using the following curl command. If everything is successful, you should receive a JSON response with the full quote details and the ID, showing that our read handler is working as intended. With our create endpoint completed, let's move on to the read handler. Here we're going to keep it simple and only implement a method to retrieve all of the quotes in our database. In a production system, you'd probably want to implement pagination and perhaps filtering, but that's another topic in itself. If you're interested in a more production ready setup, however, then please let me know in the comments down below. If I get enough interest, then I'll probably set up an entire course on how to do so. Jumping back on over to our handlers code, let's go ahead and create a new one for reading our quotes. This method will return either a JSON body with our quotes or an HTTP status code. To make pulling data out of the database a little easier, let's add a new macro to our quote struct. This is the from row macro from the SQLX library, which allows us to automatically pull out rows from the database into our Rust types. Now we can use the query as method from SQLX, which will allow us to convert our rows automatically into our quote type. Using this with the fetch all method will give us a vector of quotes, which happens to be our return type. Lastly, we just want to match the response to either a success or failure, depending on the result of the query. With the handler implementation complete, we can now add it to our application's router in the main function. We'll use the get method for this with the slash quotes path. Make sure that your handle function is also set to be public, otherwise your build will fail. Then we just need to commit our code and push it up to GitHub. All we have to do now is wait for Flow to build and deploy it.
Once it's deployed, we can test our endpoint using curl, and we get back an array containing our single quote. To test this further, let's go ahead and add another quote using our create endpoint. Now if we run our get request again, we should receive an array containing both of them. With that, our read handler is complete, and we can move on to the next method. The next letter in the acronym is U, which stands for update. Using this method, we're going to want to be able to update both the book and quote fields of an existing quote record. To achieve this, we're going to create an endpoint which accepts an ID as a path parameter, and will be called using an HTTP put method. The handler will accept the same request body as our create endpoint. Back in our handler code, let's define a new function, which takes the following three parameters. The first is our state which provides our database connection pool. The second is the quote UUID pulled from the ID path parameter. And finally, the third is going to be a request body, which is the same as our create handler. Lastly, we want to return an HTTP status code to determine whether or not the update operation was successful. With our function defined, let's go ahead and implement it. Let's first create a variable storing the current time. We'll use this to set the updated at timestamp in our data model. Next, we can craft our SQL, which will update the row with the provided ID, setting both the book and the quote itself to the input values. We'll also set the updated at timestamp to the value we stored earlier. The last thing we want to do is check to see how many rows were actually affected by this update operation. If the count of rows is zero, then that means there was no entry for the ID given, and we should return a 404 to the client to let them know that this resource doesn't exist. Otherwise, we'll set a status code of OK. Lastly, we'll check the result of this operation and return an internal server error if something went wrong. Now we can add this handler to our application router. We first need to import the put method from the Axum package, and then we can use it with our slash quotes slash ID path. The syntax specifies that the path itself has a path parameter, in our case called ID. Same as before, let's commit our code and push it to our repo. Then we just need to wait for Flow to automatically build our code and deploy it. To test this, I created an initial quote that is incorrect. I can send a put request to the slash quotes slash ID path with my updated fields. And I receive back an HTTP status code of 200. Now if I retrieve all of the quotes again, I can see that my changes have been applied, and the quotes updated at value has also changed. The last action we need for our basic CRUD application is the delete functionality, which will accept an HTTP delete request to a path containing the quote ID we wish to delete. We should be pretty familiar with how to do this by now. Let's add a new function called delete quote into our handlers method. This function will accept the database pool and the UUID found in the path. The SQL for this method is pretty simple, deleting any rows from the quotes table where the ID matches our input. For our status code return value, let's use the same logic we used in our update handler, where we check for the number of rows affected and return an appropriate status code accordingly. With the handler completed, we can now add it to our application router using the delete method. Now that that's done, we can commit this code and push it up to our repo, which will then be deployed by Flow. Once everything is deployed, we can test it out using curl. Let's first grab the ID of the quote that we wish to delete. We can then send a delete request to the following endpoint, making sure to use the ID of the entry we wish to remove. We receive back a 200, which tells us everything works as expected, which we can verify. The last thing we want to test is deleting a quote that doesn't exist. If we generate a brand new UUID and pass this in as our path parameter, we should receive a 404 when we try to delete that resource which we do, showing that everything is working as expected. And with that, we've managed to create a simple CRUD app using the most loved tech stack, according to the Stack Overflow developer survey, at least. Using the sponsor of today's video, Flow, we were able to easily deploy this with integrated CI CD at no extra cost, which allows us to easily get started with an app idea without needing to worry about deployment. This is a pretty awesome product, in my opinion. If you do want to move to a paid service, well, their pricing is pretty reasonable, especially for this economy. As always, you can find this code on GitHub. The link is in the description down below. Otherwise, I want to give a big thank you to my newest channel member, Jaziel Sama. Thank you for supporting the channel and enabling me to bring content to hundreds of thousands of viewers. A big thank you to everyone else for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.